I wanted to bring Emily on today because she is an expert. She's been going at this a long time. She knows her stuff front and back. And she's always, she's been a coach to me for years. And that makes her a really good broker. I would much rather have somebody who I can trust and talk it through with and know for certain that I'm making the right decision instead of just go at it alone. My name is Melissa Avera, and I love being a realtor. I specialize in real estate in the DFW and surrounding areas, and I also grew up here, so I'm very familiar with the Metroplex. Buying or selling a home can be an extremely stressful task, so I really try to go the extra mile to take that stress out of my clients' hands. This is Going the Extra Mile. Now, from Frito Nation Productions in the Caddo Office Reimagined Studios, here's Melissa. Thanks, Chris. Today, I have a very, very special guest in the studio with me today, my friend Emily Vale, who is also my broker. We are going to talk about a few different things with you guys today, but first and foremost, I, I want to introduce Emily and um, give you a little background about how I know her and our relationship. Hi. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Melissa. So... When I very first got into real estate, I met Emily, and from day one, she was my go-to person. I I could tell there was just an instant connection, and as the days and weeks and years went by when you're new to anything, uh, you have a lot of questions. You need the help. You need resources, and she was always, and still to this day, is that person for me, no no matter what crazy scenario I'm in or what crazy thing comes up, there's never been a time you've let me down. You always have the answer. <laughs> I mean, well, it, thank you. It, it, it doesn't matter if it's 11 o'clock at night, which I hate to be that person, but sometimes it's necessary. And she texts me back an answer right away. There's never been like, hey, I need to consult an attorney or I need to do this. It's She knows her stuff. And that is huge in the real estate business because you want someone who is guiding you and helping you grow and learning the right way. Our industry gets a really bad rap for a bunch of people getting in when it's hot and they don't know what the heck what the heck they're doing or who to ask questions. Right. And I can see it when I review contracts that I get from other people. You know, they're just it's sloppy. Things aren't always done the right way. But if you're taught from the very beginning, the right way to do things, it just makes it easier. Yeah. And when I started my brokerage three years ago, my biggest goal that I had in mind was, you know, outside of just the, you know, commission structure and those kind of things was to always keep it as a, you know, single point of contact environment where, there was never any question for the agents of where to go for help, you know, what number to dial, is that person going to answer, you know, what do I do? Because the reality is real estate happens in the moment and there's, you, you've got to have an answer to that question or you may start down the wrong road. So that's really what I strive for every day is to make myself available to my agents. Well, you do an amazing job of that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's important. Like starting a brokerage is not an easy thing. Uh, no, at all not. <laughs> There's it, that takes a lot, a lot of work. And it's not just to start it. It's a it's a daily grind. Mm-hmm. You know, plus feeding all the calls and putting out fires from everybody else, and then you're trying to run your own business. You know, right, right. so it's a lot of work, and you have always. Without saying anything or doing anything, it's like you always kind of have helped me keep a level of accountability. You know, every year I have grown. I've gotten better. I've done more business. And you are a huge part of that. Yeah, and your own personal motivation because, you know, I think a lot of people get into real estate thinking that, well, I'm going to do this because I'm going to make my own schedule and I'm going to make $100,000 in the first year. Everybody <laughs> everybody has that six-figure goal, you know, when they when they first get licensed and although the potential is obviously there to make that kind of income and I certainly 
do have agents within my brokerage who regularly make that kind of income, it, it's, it's like you said, it's a daily grind. And you've got to always have that drive and motivation of, yeah, I can, you know, take off one day and go to my kid's dance recital, but I can't make that every day right? I can't, I have to look at this as a full-time job. And I think that's the difference in successful agents and ones who are not, or just make a modest income is, is that daily motivation. So I think that's something you have that, you know, a lot of agents out there don't. So. Yeah. I mean, you have to have it I mean, to me, if you, if you know, it's an industry you want to stay in and you want to succeed at, you can't do it part-time and do it well. There's a lot of people who get in when it's hot. And as soon as they realize they want food with their meals, they get out because they're not. I mean, It's always good to have food with your meals. It's it's the truth. I mean, people get licensed and they're motivated, but they think their phone's going to start ringing or people are just going to knock on their door and say, list my million dollar house. It doesn't work that way. I mean, some people maybe, but you have to, again, show that you're, competent that people can trust you that you know what they're doing you're dealing with their biggest financial decision they're probably ever going to make so they don't want somebody who just has no clue what they're doing you know it's important for them to feel confident and you have definitely taught me and guided me and got me you know pointed me in the right direction of everything whether it was getting into the the buffini you know Mm -hmm. things which is a another coaching aspect of it. I mean, there's just so many different elements and I think it's important to surround yourself no matter what you do and what industry to have mentors and to have people who have done it a lot longer than you and who know it better than you, because that's who you're going to learn from. I think, you know, it's, it's really important as a consumer out there, which, you know, just about, everyone in this country eventually at some point will be a real estate consumer, whether it's, you know, they'll purchase their first house and then they'll sell that house and purchase their second house and, and so forth and so on. And I think it's really, really critical for the consumer to educate themselves on who is this agent? You know, I I hear a lot of people say, ah, you know, I'm just my, my hairdresser's sister is is a real estate agent. So I'm going to use that person without really looking into, you know, or asking the questions, what is your production? What is your experience? How long have you been at it? Um, What extras do you provide? You know, what is, do you have testimonials, things like that? And there's just so much that differentiates one real estate agent from another that uh, people don't really think about or, research properly. And when you are considering buying or selling the single most expensive commodity that you will ever buy or sell in your lifetime, then you should put as much thought or more into that than any other purchase that you make. For sure. How many agents do you have? I have 15 currently um, on my team. I have a, a, I'd call it a budding boutique brokerage. I, I definitely intend to always keep it small to medium sized because, you know, I want to have that that more intimate environment where not only can I be a single point of contact for these guys, but they can get to know each other. And that's something I think we do really well. Oh, yeah. In our brokerage is, you know, we don't see each other very often, mm-hmm. especially in the last year and a half, Right. But, and we live all over the Metroplex. So we do get together some, but really it's more of a sort of virtual communication, you know, through, through like a group app where they're constantly throwing out questions and answering each other. And it's just a really great dynamic. Do you recruit them or do they find you? They find me. Melissa can testify that I'm not the world's best recruiter. It's not what I love. Mm -hmm. And I don't like to make cold calls or stress people out or pressure people. And there's a lot of that that goes on in our industry. Melissa can tell you probably gets a call a day from a, from a real estate recruiter. So it's kind of one of those things that 
we as agents are desensitized to. So I don't really go that route. I get a lot of personal, you know, referrals from my agents and from people that I know that know what I'm doing and know that it's different and good. It's like yeah. word of mouth, just yeah. kind of how I try to do my business. Yeah. Everything, you know, word of mouth or by referral. Mm-hmm. It's the best way to do it. What makes a good agent? Well, I mean, obviously the the easy answer is production, right? I do look at production to see if there's someone who has proven that they are doing the things they need to to get business. But I think there's also a component of, you know, willingness to to learn and be flexible and not be set in the way that they do things, but open to, um, you know, coaching and instruction. Because the bottom line is every time you get comfortable where you are, the market completely changes. And sometimes that happens over time. And sometimes it happens very quickly, like what we're experiencing right now. And if you're not ready to open your mind to, okay, I've always done things this way, but now I've got to do things differently, sort of riding that wave, then I'm not going to, not going to make it. So I guess those are kind of the two things that I look for most is, is, Proven production as well as um, coachability. You coachable, most <laughs> very. <laughs> I'll let you take that one. <laughs> Extremely, yeah. I mean, I think it's the mark of a good agent to not be so arrogant that they feel like, well, I've been doing this for. You know, if you ever hear an agent as a consumer, if you ever hear an agent say, "I've been," they lead with, "I've been at this twenty five years." That's probably a red flag. If Isn't that's that a red flag everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's their claim to fame, you know, they probably don't stay as up to date um, as they should, right? Or they're <laughs> or they're relying on that to 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 be what makes them an expert or a good agent. And nine times out of ten, to me, that's a red flag that they, you know, are not at all coachable or adaptable. Not yeah. to make this about me, but I was in sports talk radio for a long time, and back when we used to take phone calls. People will call in and say, well, I've been a Cowboy season ticket holder since 1960, which made them feel like they had the right to complain. Yeah. So one of our talk show hosts at the ticket where I worked, the Minnesota Twins had a special going on where they sold upper deck season tickets for $1 a game. So he bought season tickets to the Minnesota Twins, even though he was never, ever going to go to a game. He lived in Dallas, but... He bought the season tickets just so he could say, I'm a season ticket holder, so I can complain. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. You always get those people. There's no doubt. <laughs> yes, yes. And I think, you know, in, in the world of real estate, I'd rather I'd rather have an agent on my team that has that's two years in, but is just on fire for the business than someone who has 20 years of experience and is just sort of stagnating. I mean, that's a real differentiator to me, that fire in the belly. you got to have it. Yeah. And And like you said, you have to. That's the great thing, though, about our group, honestly, is I had mentioned before that a lot of realtors, most, are pretty territorial. People don't really try to help each other a ton or coach each other. You're competing they look at you as competition. And with our group, even though we're all over the place, right? It's like we could still technically be competing. I mean, I'm in McKinney. You're in Frisco. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. pretty much the same thing. Mm. But it, the fact. I thought of it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that we all try to help each other. You know, if somebody has a question, they'll put it out there on like a group app. And we, we just try to really, if we see something that is new or, hey, I just noticed this seems to be changing in the market the last week. Are you guys noticing this? You know, we just help each other and share that information. And that's a huge, huge thing that I would say you don't get hardly anywhere else. Yeah. And that's because we are a small group. So it can be more one-on-one and it can be more intimate. And you get that connection with your broker you just have to make the effort and work hard. When I think you know? in our group, everyone has checked their arrogance at the door, right? There's no, I mean, including myself, if, if especially with a rapidly changing market, so, somebody threw something out there, 
yesterday or the day before in our WhatsApp group. And I said, I've never seen that. You know, I mean, I'm not afraid to say I've never seen that. And, and nobody else is either. It's not like people are jumping in and saying, oh, well, in my expert opinion, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's a lot of uh, just open and honest discussion about what we would do in that situation or whether we've come across it before. Nobody's afraid to to admit that, I guess, is, is the right word. Just so, being transparent yeah, with each other. And that's how I am with, I mean, with my clients, with other agents I'm working with. I mean, just the more upfront you can be and transparent so people know what to expect or, hey, I- I'm just trying to help you get this done. I'm trying to get your house closed so you can move. These are the things we need to do. Everybody get on the same page. And it makes everything so much easier. Well, I know from our last session, one of your big goals is not to have any surprises. Oh, well, there's always going to be surprises. It just depends on the type of surprise, uh-huh. <laughs> um, I guess. And that's part of going the extra mile. Right. Is the communication and... um. And it seems like you guys really work together. And I also know, I hope I know, you're competitive. Yeah. You're a very competitive person. At least it strikes me, whether it's competing against someone else or just trying to get a personal best. Right. Um, So it's interesting to see and hear you talk about working with others in a competitive industry. There must be a fine line that you have to walk in order not to be so competitive that... It is, but it, at the same point, again, I try to help other people in the industry. You know, I mean, at the last few days, I've spent a lot of time reviewing offers that I got over the weekend on some listings. And for the first time, I thought, man, normally it's easy. You just pick the best offer and move on. But there's so many that you're having to sift through. It's unbelievable. I mean, I have to keep like a spreadsheet of everyone to keep it straight and see what's the best, what's the second best. And it was eye-opening to me, though, in reviewing the offers, how some people would write their, con- the other agents would write the contracts, and I would call Emily or I'd shake my head and just, wow, do these people even know what they're doing? Yeah, and the answer it, is no in a lot of cases. It was just so sloppy, but I tried to help the person – and do it very professionally and respectfully. So I would call them and say, hey, I got your offer. I want to talk to you about it. I have a few questions. And when I would say, I noticed this, this something that was wrong, or it was, if I would have signed it, it would be doing their client a huge disservice, which isn't my problem, right? Yeah. If I represent the seller, but at the same point, I, I don't want to do that to somebody. You know, I'm trying to help them make make the correction, and if we if it moves forward, great. But you know, I'm not trying to leave anybody in the dark or pull the wool over their eyes and just sign it and be like, "Oh, you missed that." You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in in our industry, there's several things to sort of govern how we do business. Obviously, our license with the Texas Real Estate Commission, but there's a separate entity that comes from. NAR, which everybody's heard of NAR, right? The National Association of Realtors with regard to ethical behavior. And so, you know, we sign on to uphold a canon of ethics and one of them is to treat all parties fairly. So that sort of falls into that category of, you know, not only do you have to look out for the best interest of your client, the seller, and having a clean offer (laughs) is in their best interest, So sometimes that, you know, but also to treat all parties fairly. And I think sometimes that creates a situation where you have to sort of do other people's jobs if they don't know how to do them. And that can get a little tedious. But by the same token, we got to keep the big picture in mind, which is getting the best deal for our client. And how do we do that? We make sure everybody's doing their job. So a lot of times it's, you know, as a listing agent, doing part of the buyer's agent job, part of the lender's job title, you know, kind of getting in there and coordinating and making sure that everybody is on the same page. So a little difficult sometimes, especially right now. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I think that's something that I I thought was, you know, important to touch on is that, 
you know, people, the consumer thinks that, oh gosh, we're in such a amazing seller's market. I'll just put my house on the market myself or go with a, you know, one of these, you know, companies or, you know, something that seems like cheaper a for, a, a, you know, for yeah. a lack of, lack of a better word and, you know, s- sort of uh, greed motivated, I guess. But the reality is, and there's been a ton of studies by NAR on this subject, what actually happens when, uh, when an owner goes for sale by owner and what those numbers look like. And it's been proven over the years in every kind of market that you have far more to lose than you have to gain. You know, it's kind of the lose, lose or gain 3% to lose 10% or 15%. And I think having someone who can review that slew of offers from a standpoint of really understanding every line item and how that impacts the final numbers and being able to watch for red flags of, you know, well, this might look like a good offer, but here's the problem with it. Something behind the scenes that you can't see without experience. And so I think it's really important for the consumer to understand that. So I would think that selling a house, even if you're an owner who is competent enough to trudge through the process, I wouldn't want to do it. Right. I mean, I, yeah. would, I, would, I would gladly pay the extra, even if I was confident that I could do it. I would yeah. gladly pay some. I can change my oil in my car. <laughs> but you don't. I'm very happy paying someone else to do it. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think because the, the numbers look so big on paper, people yeah. think, oh, I can do that. I can save myself, you know, 10 grand or, or whatever. Or they just see, you know, homes or a sign goes in a yard one day and then it's pending or sold a day or two later, you know? So, wow, if there's that big of a shortage of, in- of inventory and there's this many people trying to buy, sure. I mean, right now they might be able to sell their house fast, but doing it by themselves, but are they going to get top dollar? They'll never know. Uh, I'm pretty certain probably They not. won't, but they'll, they'll, they'll think they did, but they actually won't. Right. So um, there's, there's a lot going on right now that, You know, Melissa and I were just discussing this yesterday that makes it actually more involved, more difficult, more intricate to list a house and sell a house right now than in any other market I've experienced since I've been doing this for 15 years. I'm going to throw you guys a curveball. We can edit this out if you want. But can we do a part two of this and get into that on the whole process of selling your house? Mm -hmm. That's going to be the next episode of Going the Extra Mile, um, which will be released in about two weeks. If you have questions about buying, selling, renting, or investing, don't go at it alone. Reach out to Melissa at 214-280-4317 or melissa at melissamovesdfw.com. You can find out more about the Melissa Avera Realty Group at TVG by visiting melissamovesdfw.com. Thank you for listening to Going the Extra Mile.